<clears throat> Good morning. Hey, so yesterday was kind of a fun, fun morning here at Sutter Smoke headquarters with the Q31 quarantine AM shortwave on hand receiver project because it was a day of kind of, I guess we'd call system in integration. I've been building all these different stages and building them each in their own little Altoid sized box. And up until yesterday, the only one I really had on the chassis was the VFO box. But yesterday, having completed a number of the other kind of sub-assemblies, I put them on the, on the chassis, powered them up, and then ran small coax to interconnect them as necessary. So over here, we have the bandpass filter. Bandpass filter comes up into this box, which contains the first stage of an RF amplifier and the diode ring mixer. The diode ring mixer and the amplifier is fed by RF coming in from the antenna. This one goes back over here to the antenna connector. In comes here RF, in comes here VFO, and out over here is 455 KCIF that runs under and up into this board over here, one stage of IF amplification, the filter you see in there, the 455KC filter, and another stage of RF amplification. Now, here's the fun part. Well, wait, let me review here for you what we're talking about. So, bandpass filter up there. RF amplifier in there. Diode ring mixer in there. VFO up in there. Um, first stage of IF amplification, that's over there. I'm getting dizzy here. <laughs> the filter is up in there. And the second stage of IF amplification is in there. And that's how far we've built so far, all right? We'll talk about the gain measurements here in a minute. But... When I got this far, you know, I, I like to test each stage as we go along, but when you start putting them together, you should start testing them to see how well they work together in a unified way. Now we did this a bit when we tested the, um, the diode ring mixture. We had the VFO coming in and I put a signal generator and we saw that it was producing 455 KC, that was fine. But this was an opportunity to test it from, say, the antenna port all the way through to the output of the second IF amplifier. Now, I don't have, an, I don't have a, a detector yet. This is the detector, the AM detector. And I don't have any AF amplification in there yet. So there's, I'm not going to hear anything. But there's no reason why I can't put a scope probe right here at 455KC and listen and see with... I got a signal coming from the signal generator over here at 9.66 megahertz, which is like the middle of the passband for the 31 meter short wave band. I got that going in here, got the VFO on. So there should be a 455 KC signal coming out there, right? So let's see what happens, okay? Watch the scope. I'm going to tune this thing. And it should be right around mid. Oh, oh, boom. Look at that. Boom. Boom. Right there. And notice, yeah, right, right pretty much where it should be. Right there. Kind of around mid-range on the, on the capacitor. Doesn't show up anywhere else as I tune. Where is it? Boom. There we go. Boom. That's where you want it. So this is really very satisfying. It shows that the whole thing together is is working. But now, you know, you got to measure, you know, because if you don't measure it, you don't really know how well it's working. So first I took a look and said, you know, theoretically, how should this thing work? So I kind of did, I did a quick and dirty measurement of the bandpass filter and saw that it, it, it was about a 5 dB loss. We had measured the RF amplifier as 
plus 15 dB. Diode ring mixers, typically a 6 dB loss. First IF amplifier, 15 dB gain. The spec sheet on the Murata um, ceramic filter says about a 4 dB loss and about 15 dB gain on the second IF amplifier. So you add and subtract all that up and you should get about a 30 dB gain from over here to over here. So then what I did was I took a, a 47 ohm resistor and measured how much power I was getting out of the signal generator, recorded the voltage. And then I went and took another 47 ohm resistor, which you can see in there, put it across the output of this IF amplifier and using my scope measured the voltage. And I did some calculations. I had to do some peaking and tweaking over here to get the, uh, the bandpass filter optimized. But it was really very satisfying because I think my calculations came out to like 28.4 uh, dBm, a 28.4 dB gain. I'm sorry, 28.4 dB gain, and the predicted was 30, and so that was that was pretty close. So I'm pretty satisfied that this whole system so far is is working as it should. Now here's the challenge. So I've got 30 dB here. The rule of thumb is to get the receiver like this to work properly, you need 100 dB. So I'm missing 70 dB here, and I still got to get through the, uh, the AM detector. So I'm going to have to have a lot of AF gain here, and that might be hard to come by with my beloved discrete uh, transistors. We'll see. I'm going to mess around with this a little bit. We'll see what comes next. But like I said, a very satisfying morning. And let me take this scope probe off here. Close the hatch. Man, it's starting to look like, it's starting to look like a receiver, don't you think? I think it's looking beautiful. I really like the, uh, the gray Altoid size cans. And of course, that big, beautiful capacitor, the Yeti stone coil, looking good. All right. I'll try to put up another one tomorrow. Maybe we'll have some progress on the detector and the audio frequency amplification. For now, stay safe, stay inside, stay in the shack, 7-3.